Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. My name is Christoph and today we'll be going over the only Marksman macro guide that you'll ever need. It's pretty obvious what we're going to be talking about this video, but specifically we're going to be talking about some basic strategies and macro play concepts you need to consider as an AD carry. Like always, please leave feedback or let us know how we're doing down below in the comments section and let us know which role you'd like to see next for this type of guide. If you like this content, then make sure to check out our channel for other videos just like this one. Also, if you want to see huge improvements to your rank this season, then please check out ProGuides.com where we've created courses to help you guys get your gameplay to the next level by partnering with League's best pro players. We have a wonderful Pro Pass which gets you unlimited access to every guide in League of Legends, Fortnite, CSGO, Smash Bros, and Hearthstone, and also gives you one-on-one -on -one coaching from the best of the best. With that being said, let's get started. Like we said in our other videos, remember that all this information is subjective. Our hope is that the main takeaway from this video is an improved mindset and a better understanding of macro concepts. From there, figure out what works and doesn't work for you. While we do go over general guidelines, just remember that they're only guidelines. Not everything is going to be 100% correct all the time, and you need to use your best judgment in every situation. So let's start by talking about some of the characteristics of the bot lane itself. Bot lane, much like top lane, is a longer lane. This means that freezes and ganks are going to be even more effective as a result of the distance between you and the turret. As of patch 9.12, bot lane's turret is also the only turret that doesn't receive fortification during the first five minutes of the game. Fortification reduces damage taken from all sources by 50%. This makes bot lane outer turrets the easiest turret to take in the very early game. Hence, this is also why it's typically occupied by a duo and a ranged carry. With this in mind, let's talk about champion select. During champion select, you'll want to focus on your matchups and the jungle matchups. While you might win 1v1, remember that supports can significantly change how fights play out. Make sure to factor this in when determining how you can win fights and when you should be looking for them. Based on this information, you need to have a game plan entering Summoner's Rift. Think about what your team's win condition is. Also think about the times when you're stronger in a matchup at a certain point in the game and what you can do to possibly affect those win conditions. Regardless of who you're playing, you're going to be one of your team's biggest damage threats. Veer towards the side of caution as falling behind as a marksman can potentially doom your team come the mid to late game. Following champion select, let's talk about the early game. For the sake of this explanation, early game is pre-14 minutes or before the first turret is taken. During the early game, we have one primary goal as a marksman. Break the turret. During our assessment of team comps during champion select, we should have gathered enough information to determine whether we want to play aggressively or defensively. In winning matchups where we can poke our opponent or win trades, we want to create pressure in some way. In losing matchups, we're trying to stall as long as we can and wait for item power spikes or ganks to help alleviate the pressure. In situations where you won't get ganks, we'll actually talk about something you can do a little bit later. But first, let's run through an example. Just to make it a little bit easier, we'll use Lucian to demonstrate this point because, you know, level 2 power spike. Here, Lucian enters lane with the intent of fighting on power or wave advantages, trading aggressively to get his opponents low, and then taking control of the lane. With lane control, Lucian can then freeze the wave and make his opponents risk dying when they want to farm. Whether it's from a 2v2 engage or because of a jungle gank, this would be devastating for the enemy bot lane. Another option with a freeze is to transition it into a slow push when the allied jungler is nearby. If his opponents are low, they can dive the enemy bot lane after crashing a big wave into the turret. Successful ganks or chunking opponents would allow Lucian to take tower plating and slowly work toward the primary goal of breaking bottom lane. What about secondary goals though? Just like how a top laner holds partial responsibility for the Rift Herald and top jungle, bot laners hold responsibility over dragons and bot jungle. Rather than focusing on taking turret every game, be ready to switch your primary goal to taking dragon when it's infernal and sometimes when it's mountain. Ocean Drakes are also a great take in some games where you have specific champions who can benefit from it like tank tops, poke mages, or Soraka support. Air Dragons aren't usually a priority, not that they aren't great, but the Air Dragon deals the most damage so it might not be worth the risk in many situations. Taking bottom turret ultimately makes it easier to take dragon control as well. If you can break the tier 1, you'll be able to push bottom lane all the way to tier 2, 
take vision control, and take dragon with ease. If the enemy team comes to contest, they'll have to sacrifice the wave you pushed bottom, so you can disengage and repeat the process again. In terms of supporting the jungler, be ready to take vision early and secure lane priority. Especially against aggressive junglers, it's not uncommon for them to attempt to invade your bot side jungle. If your jungler starts topside and you think they'll get invaded, you can try to slow push your wave and crash it once your jungler starts their second buff. This will allow you to watch your jungler and immediately react if you spot the enemy jungler invading. It's especially important here as a bot laner to do what you can to support your jungler. The reason for this is that the most common way to break bottom turret is by setting up some play with your jungler. It can be a gank off a of freeze you set up, a tower dive because of a trade you got, or off of a roam or TP by one of your solo laners. Regardless, all of these situations are more likely to succeed when your jungler is able to gain a lead or stabilize a losing matchup. So what happens when your support roams? Even though we generally want to take the bottom turret, sometimes there's more to be gained elsewhere in the map. Say for example, top lane has a volatile matchup like Riven versus Irelia. After resetting, your support may judge that it's best for the team to roam top and leave you alone. Ideally, this results in them snowballing a lead top and also securing Rift Herald. In comparison to a dragon like Air or Ocean, your team would come out on top with a tempo lead and also winning the solo lane. In these situations, we need to respect our teammates' decisions, whether they're right or wrong. If we're playing champions who can safely clear the wave and survive a dive, we can stay in lane and try to clear the best we can. Champions like Lucian, Sivir, and Ezreal are a bit safer, they can use their abilities, ultimates included, to try and clear waves while also having potential to outplay dives. Champions like Draven who aren't safe in a 2v1 situation may need to stand far away and only soak XP if his opponents allow him. Anytime a jungler comes to make it a 3v1, you'll almost certainly have to back off the turret to avoid feeding an extra kill. Kill. If our opponents freeze the lane, it's actually pretty optimal. Rather than getting dove and feeding a kill, we can allow our opponents to freeze while our support roams. Think about it this way. When a mid laner freezes, their opponent can go to a side lane and gank to punish it. In this situation, you and your support are in essence one entity. Your opponent is freezing, so your support is roaming to punish it. A third option when your support roams is to roam with them. Especially after resets and when you don't value the dragon that is alive, this is something you should consider. While risky, a marksman plus support double roam top has potentially game-breaking effects. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to take this option. The most important thing to realize about this rotation is you're doing it to trade objectives. Sometimes you'll do it because you're behind and need to get something back, and sometimes because it's the play that'll net you more. Here are some of the reasons on screen. When you choose to rotate with your support, you'll usually try to gank whatever lane you both go to. If it's top lane and your top laner can slow push, you can gank through lane or dive them with your top laner once your wave crashes. In either top or mid, you can also gank from behind when the enemy is overextended. From there, you can push for that turret and or Rift Herald while the enemy team trades bot side. That's a ton of information, but with time and practice, it'll become second nature. Good news though, things actually get easier into the mid to late game in terms of marksman macro. So why marksman? In the mid to late game, your options may be limited as a marksman and depend heavily on the success of your early game, the champions you're playing, and whether or not you ran teleport. First, let's talk universal concepts. Why even marksman to begin with? Well, the reason is, you scale hard. Marksmen make team fighting and the later stages of the game so much easier. You're a primary source of damage for your team and usually the most important member for taking turrets. Survival is key for two reasons. Even if your team wins a team fight or makes a pick to create a numbers advantage, there may be scenarios where they can't take any objectives because they lost their marksmen. Secondly, dying too early in a teamfight means you won't be able to deal much damage and also means that there's less of a threat the longer a fight goes on. In most scenarios, you're going to need to be grouped with your team. Whether your team is going for a 1-3-1, a 4-1, or even a 5-man group, you'll almost always be part of the big group. This is because you need to be in a position to either contest or trade objectives. Split pushers will usually have teleport or some other form of mobility to help them arrive faster to contest objectives. On the other hand, marks have just as much objective pressure, but usually need teammates to draw out their full strength. 
In the mid to late game as marksmen, most people get confused about where to go. Remember, the most important thing in any game of League is objectives. Think about which objective is most important at all times. Let's say Infernal Dragon is on the board, and both teams desperately want it. Team A had a solid early game. They're coming out of base from a reset after taking a turret bot lane. It's pretty easy here to know what they should be going back for. Push the wave take Infernal. They're ahead, they know which objective they want, and have a simple approach to get it. What about the enemy team? Team B. They're behind on tempo, also weaker, Infernal Dragon is on the board, and they need it, so what should they do? In situations like this, you need to quickly assess whether or not you can even contest the dragon. If Team A is late to reset, missing important cooldowns or ultimates, or low and overstaying, there's potential to contest the dragon and turn this game around. However, in most cases, the better play would be for Team B to actually forfeit the dragon and start their own play elsewhere. It's extremely obvious that Team A will go for Infernal Dragon because that's the most important objective. If Team B tries to contest that when they're behind, it's honestly just straight up throwing. Not only will they lose the Infernal, they'll also more likely lose the fight as well and give away more gold. Knowing Team A will go for Dragon, Team B can allocate their resources elsewhere. Simultaneously while they go for Dragon, Team B could go to Rift Herald or execute a Marksman support gank top and trade top turret. Although it's not what Team B wants, they wouldn't be able to get Infernal anyway, so at least they get something back in this situation. Remember, as a marksman, you are the most important player for securing objectives. Where you decide to go is basically where your team needs to go as well. Your presence alone puts pressure on the map, so you need to be decisive and intelligent about where you rotate. As the mid-game progresses, continue to move to whichever objectives are coming up and are important. If Rift Herald is on the map while Dragon is down, you need to be topside, not farming bottom. After securing the Herald and no neutral objectives are on the map, you need to decide the most effective way to apply pressure. If one of your soul laners can clear waves 1v2, your best option is to swap with them. You'll be able to 2v1 their lane opponent and pressure the turret while your teammate can clear waves. Ideally, you'll want to help your team break whatever outer turrets you can. This allows you to have more control of the map and also get more money in your pocket. Once Baron gets near spawning, you have another season of change coming your way. Quite ironically, anytime Baron is alive or soon spawning, you should never be bot side. So much for being a bot laner, huh? Most of the time, someone else on your team should be bot instead. Since bot lane is on the opposite side of the map, you'll basically never make it in time. This is the main reason why 1-3-1 and 4-1 splits are so common. If you ever bot side as a marksman, the enemy team should immediately begin pressuring Baron. The only exception to this is if you ran teleport. As a marksman with teleport, you have more freedom to side lane, and you can also commit to collapsing on an enemy side laner, the split pushing. For example, your top laner is getting pressured by their opponent in the bot lane, while the enemy team is continuously pressuring Baron. To stop this, you can clear the wave mid, rotate bottom, and help your top laner kill the split pusher. If the enemy team starts Baron, you'll be able to teleport mid or onto a ward near Baron. If your top laner has TP2, well now you're in a 5v4 situation and can start Baron on your own terms. Now for most games, when you're not running teleport, the late game really just comes down to your mechanics and ability to team fight. There's only one thing you need to understand otherwise, and that's lane assignments. 1-3-1, grouping as 4, and grouping as 5. In a 1-3-1, you'll be part of a group of 3, while your solo laners split push. You're the main wave clear in your group, and your goal is just push as much as you can and not get engaged on. Anytime the enemy team collapses on either of your split pushers, you'll need to fast push, get vision control, or start Baron or Dragon. If the enemy team engages on you, you need to disengage it and allow your split pushers to take turrets. Now grouping with four is when one of your solo laners can't side lane, but one of them can. If you need to, you'll set up a slow push in one side lane and then group with your team after. Anytime you're rotating back to your team, walk the safe way. This is important. You're not able to 1v1 most enemies, so getting caught out in rotations can lose you games. Your goal is to support your split pusher by fighting for priority as a group of four and then taking vision control for them. The hard part is avoiding engages by the enemy team. You'll need to position safely, continue to clear waves, and attempt to disengage any attempts by your opponents. When you group as four, that means you're supporting your split pusher. Do whatever you can to help them get the inhibitor they're going for. 
you'll probably want to group as five when your team is unable to match a split pusher or simply can't split push effectively. You're looking for any favorable team fights, engages, picks, or dives while grouping with your team. Your team needs to pull the trigger in these situations unless the enemy team is also grouped as five. Grouping as five means you'll force plays and create numbers advantages. Afterwards, you assess which objective is safest and best to take. Anytime a game is close, review your gameplay. You need to optimize your play so that you're the one who's ahead in the late game more often than being behind. Playing from behind is extremely difficult, so make sure to pay close attention to your early and mid game when reviewing. Especially watch your early game. You want to look for objectives to use those rotations we mentioned earlier, and also take note of which objectives you prioritized. Question if those were the right objectives, and also if you were in the right positions to contest. If not, make notes of it to yourself and be ready to trade objectives, or choose the right ones in your next game. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, you can check out ProGuides.com to see massive improvements in your rank this season. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and consider subbing to our channel for more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and we'll see you on the Rift.